a drunk cop, a drunk police officer rear ends a driver, injures a child and they cover it up. Well, we're gonna expose it right here. Uh, let's do this, let's put up the picture of the officer that was involved. An off duty county cop rear ended a driver fractured a two year old child's skull when he rear ended the car. He had a pickup truck. He was allowed by his fellow officers to forego, not take, not participate in an alcohol test. This was in Salford County. Officer you're looking at, his name is Mozzarella, David Mozzarella. That was involved in the car crash. Uh, this particular cop decided it was okay to drive his truck over 50 miles per hour into a car holding a father and his two young sons in Middle Country Road. This was in St. James, August, all right? There's more, let me show a picture of the child. See what this cop did? Look at the injuries here. This accident was so massive, the father was thrown into the steering wheel and broke his nose. While his two year old son's skull cracked in multiple places because of this cop. The injured child had to relearn how to feed himself and perform other activities he recently learned as a toddler. Almost two years after the crash, he still needs leg braces and is unable to run or jump. Now, I'm going to expose the cover up. Officers from the precinct that this cop works in, they responded to the crash. So these are his buddies, keep that in mind. These are the people he worked with, he works with them. They responded to the crash and broke all protocol to protect this cop from going through an alcohol analysis. A detective told Sergeant Lawrence McQuaid that he wanted to administer a breathalyzer test. But Sergeant McQuaid, who's a supervisor, instead contacted Officer Joseph Russo of the County Police Benevolent Association delegate. Russo drove the cop who just almost killed a two year old away from the scene of the crash before he could be tested. Do you see what's happening here so far? You have massive injury, you have a child fighting for his life. You have a cop who's likely obviously drunk because if he wasn't, you know what they would have done? Giving him the breathalyzer in order to prove he is exonerated from any criminal action, okay? They did not, they drove him away, that's illegal. Um, Officer Ken Wustenhoff, Lied to a supervisor that he had given the cop a breath test. He never gave this officer a breath test and that he passed the breath test, another lie. An anonymous law enforcement source told Newsday. Wustenhoff later retracted his report, which means he committed a felony. He lied under an official document. Three hours after the crash, Deputy Inspector Mark Fisher finally asked Mozzarella to take a breath test. And the off duty officer then refused, wait a minute, we're three hours late. So he's so drunk, ladies and gentlemen, that even after three hours of no alcohol, he's afraid to take the alcohol test because he knows he will likely fail. Normally when a driver refuses, this is the rule. When the driver refuses the breathalyzer, a police officer will seek a warrant to have the driver's blood tested. For alcohol, Fisher instead issued a traffic citation and moved on. Because the officers broke protocol and failed to administer a test, the county DA's office was unable to pursue a vehicular assault charge against the officer. Isn't this something? The officers involved also failed to notify the county DA that Marcerella had refused to take a breathalyzer test, which prevented the DA from deciding to seek a warrant for a blood test, which could have verified that he was drunk at the scene of the accident. Let me show you the footage from the scene, look at that. This is from a security camera nearby. It shows Mozzarella throwing an object from his truck's, uh, truck's window about nine seconds after the crash. Two minutes later, 
After the cop pulled over and spoke to someone on the cell phone, he appeared to return to the object and retrieve it. County payroll records reviewed by Newsday showed the county police department suspended this officer and suspended Wustenhoff, the officer who lied about administering a test without pay on February 3rd. Wustenhoff's suspension only lasted 45 days, but the officer who ran into the back of the vehicle remained suspended. Stuart Cameron is the county police department chief and Errol Tulin is the county sheriff. So this is sad, but what does it show? What does this reveal? Number one, they don't give a damn about citizens. They don't even care about children who are dying in front of them. They knew the protocol, they knew right away what to do. They get officers responding, one cop says, nope, you will not breathalyze this guy. I'm gonna call somebody external of the police, but is basically the police. He's gonna come, he's gonna pick him up, he's gonna drive him away. They lied on reports, here's the thing. They should be arrested, not suspended, not fired, but arrested, arrested. Why? Because lying on these documents is a crime. It's a violation of the oath of office. None of them were charged with these crimes. You literally have a cop who's under a suspension who should be under the prison at this moment. All right, um, Adrian, significant cover up, obviously criminal conduct by the cop, but more criminal conduct by the cover up. Nobody is going to jail as of this moment, nobody has been arrested yet. Give me some insight here. You know what, this and actions like this are, are completely why people lose their confidence in law enforcement in total. The fact is that they're looking to cover up and to protect each other more than they are looking to protect and serve members of the public. We see that happen each and every day with these stories that come out. And while we're fortunate to have them, these individuals exposed, it's clear that the system itself is wholly broken because these stories continue to come out. And we have to think about all the stories that did not come out, all the people who were set up, who were lied to, who were lied on. On and had to suffer as a result. And when we see it, that it's, it's this child, this vulnerable member of society who is going to suffer and lose the most. It just makes you wonder at what point, if there is a point, will law enforcement ever be held accountable? Will we make some effort to change the system? And the thing is, I don't know if there will ever be a point. Yeah, as long as things like this continue to permeate, there will always be a massive separation between cop and community. It's unfortunate because it doesn't have to be. Get rid of the bad actors, you get rid of the bad sentiment.